Have you ever seen a lizard smart enough to use its hands to hunt? Well, you better stick around for today's video. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Dion and you're watching Reptiliatus. Friends, today is going to be a awesome update on my two green tree monitors, Sabzi and Basil. These are the Varanus Persinus and they are extraordinary animals that I have the pleasure of keeping in my home. Honestly, I don't know why I waited as long as I did to start keeping monitor lizards. They're so inquisitive, so intelligent, and they have so much personality when it comes to keeping a pet lizard. I'm in constant awe as they continue to do cheeky things and exhibit their intelligence in the most fascinating forms. Keeping them, enriching their lives, having the pleasure of observing them daily is so rewarding and I'm honored that I get to share that experience with you all. So in today's video, I'm going to go over how I've been enjoying keeping them. We're going to talk a little bit about each of them and then I'm going to share some really exciting insight into the planning process for their new large vivarium, which is in collaboration with Custom Reptile Habitats. Stay tuned for that near the end. As always, I want to quickly mention that my name is Dion. I make videos about specialty pets such as reptiles, amphibians, and different kinds of cool invertebrates. So if that's something you're interested in learning about, definitely consider subscribing down below and then dinging the little notification bell afterwards so you don't miss any of my uploads. That's because I usually post about two videos a week. So you have lots of opportunity to learn about and see these incredible animals every single week. Basil has been doing wonderful. That lizard who was once so shy that you'd do as much as open a door to his enclosure and he'd bolt away is now willingly climbing onto my lap to accept food and even climbing onto my arm. It's taken a very long time, but the patience and hard work is paying off. Yes, he's still fairly shy. He doesn't let me handle him, but we're making our way towards that goal. For now, I'm incredibly satisfied that I can at least coax him out to grab food and accept it that way and eventually that will hopefully build the level of confidence we seek that will lead to some handling. I get asked all the time how it is that I have such tame tree monitors. You really do need to understand that these animals are naturally pretty shy and you need to put a lot of work patience and perseverance into getting them to this level. Every few days I do this with Basil. Food is the key to these animals' heart and trust. Be patient, work slowly, move slowly, and you'll hopefully get there soon enough. What I appreciated greatly about this particular interaction is that Basil stuck around to eat his superworm. Usually, when he's willing to come out and grab prey from me, he runs back into the enclosure to eat it in safety. As always, and as you've seen with all my other content, especially with Sabzi, I make a good, strong effort to provide enrichment opportunities for my monitor lizards and all my animals at large. Here you can see that I'm showing Basil that I'm going to be putting superworms into the bird's nest and this is a form of enrichment in the sense that he is stimulated by the scent of the nest, that he has to explore the nest and that he can actually find food within the nest. A little bit more enriching, engaging than just offering him food on tongs. One of the things I appreciate so much about Basil is his willingness to eat just about anything I offer him. For example, superworms. Sabzi will not touch them unless I've soaked them in quail eggs, but Basil, he'll take them. He'll eat shrimp tails, Sabzi won't. He'll eat all sorts of things that Sabzi won't. Sabzi can be a bit of a picky eater, but Basil will wolf anything down you offer to him. Yeah, so I think that really sums up an update on Basil. As you can see, he's doing fantastic. I'm so proud of this lizard and how far he's come in his taming process. Yes, there's lots of work to be done, but you can see here that he's doing such a great job. Let's go ahead now 
and see how Sabzi is doing. But first, for today's question of the day, I'd like to ask each of you to comment down below one example of how you can enrich your pet's life. It can be a dog, it can be a cat, it can be a lizard, it can be a tortoise, it can be a turtle, it can be a frog, it can be a snake. Rightfully so, all these animals and more, tarantulas, you name it, deserve forms of enrichment in their life under our care. I would like you each to take the time to comment one suggestion down below of how you can go about enriching your animal's life. As always, I'll give your comment a heart and we can hopefully engage in a little bit of a conversation because let me just say, enrichment is crucial in the way that we go about evolving and improving our pet's husbandry and care. Thank you. Friends, here is Sabzi, my female green tree monitor lizard and she is so inquisitive and very friendly. When I express to you the work that I'm putting into Basil's taming, Sabzi is the end goal. What she represents as far as a friendly tree monitor is everything I hope to achieve in having with Basil. She loves coming out and interacting with people, she loves being hand fed, and she loves just hanging out with you. One of the most fantastic behaviors exhibited by the Varanus Prusinus complex is their ability to use tactile function to secure or reach prey in spaces that they cannot get to with their mouth. I've seen my own animals pin down prey that was moving or squirming with their hands while they secured it with their mouth. This is truly extraordinary in my opinion and serves as a testament to how intelligent these reptiles are and how necessary enrichment is as part of their care and husbandry and captivity. I've come up with a few interesting puzzle ideas that I think will really help stimulate the animals that I'm looking forward to creating or bringing to fruition and sharing with you in future content. But for now, this is a simple way of giving the animals a chance to really work their brain. It's a vial that their face can't fit into, so naturally the only option is to reach into it. And it's just that easy. As long as the animal's comfortable taking prey from you, they're gonna do this for you. And it's a really simple way that you can also get your tree monitors to exhibit this behavior if you desire doing so. Honestly, watching these animals do this never gets old. It's so strange. It just makes them seem like, I don't know, Velociraptor or some alien reptilian being with mad intelligence. This lizard is very enthusiastic and eager to get to this cricket. You can really see the gears turning in her head as she pulls her head back to re-measure how far down the tube she needs to reach. I'm not gonna lie, I would not want to be that cricket right now. Imagine what it's seeing. Ouch. Well, she got it. Circle of life. Yum yum for her. Despite the fact that I mentioned Sabzi can be a bit picky with her food, there's one thing that's for certain. She absolutely loves eating crickets and having a good chase around the enclosure. Although tree monitors are primarily insectivorous lizards and invertebrates should make up the majority of their diet, they can be offered vertebrate protein sources periodically. I usually offer my tree monitors a hopper mouse every one to two weeks, especially since they're still growing. And let me just say, they go nuts for them. Watch Basil take down this frozen thawed mouse. It's moments like this that I'm reminded that, wow, yeah, green tree monitors are related to Komodo dragons. And now it's Sabzi's turn. Oh boy, yep, she's very interested. Oh, okay. 
you go back to him, Kojo, please. It was literally one of her favorite things in the world to eat. Let's speed things up, you get the idea. Every single morning, I run Reptifoggers in my tree monitor enclosures for about an hour, sometimes two, to really boost the humidity up in the enclosure. I'm also experimenting with a monsoon misting system in Sabzi's enclosure, and this device goes off every four hours for about 15 seconds or so. It's important to remember that tree monitors like it hot. They also require a lot of water and relative humidity, but what's important is that their environment isn't kept wet. It should dry out between mistings, and yes, you can have a relatively moistened substrate, but the rest of the environment shouldn't be wet, as this can lead to a whole bunch of health issues. Okay, everybody, so the space you see behind me, all this empty space you see behind me, well, I guess it's not so empty, is going to be where the enclosure is going. I'm very excited to share this news with you all. So here's my dining room table, which is currently covered in a bunch of expo pickup stuff. Just don't mind that and a few exciting projects. But over here, in this large space, we have, yes, a large philodendron and some bromeliads and calathea and things like that, a humidifier. But this space right here, like this, is going to be housing the future tree monitor enclosure. And I am very excited to tell you that for the last few months, I've been planning this project with Paul of Custom Reptile Habitats. You can check him out. We've been planning a very exciting custom build that is going to measure six feet in length, two and a half feet in depth, and six feet in height. It's going to feature a false bottom, which will have space to cut out holes to house large potted plants and hide the irrigation or mist king system below. Ultimately, this is gonna be a very cool project. I'm very excited. The enclosure is being manufactured right now, and then it's going to be flat packed and shipped here. It's gonna have large glass sliding doors, and yeah, I'm just so excited to have this large display here for you all to enjoy, but most importantly, for the tree monitors to enjoy living in because they're growing quickly, and obviously the exoteras were just temporary for raising them essentially when they were young. So I hope you guys are excited as I am because this enclosure is literally gonna be large enough for me and a few people to stand in. But yeah, so stay tuned. We'll see how this plays out. It's gonna be wonderful. Before we end today's video, I wanna take a quick moment to sincerely thank my channel patrons over on the Patreon platform. I am incredibly appreciative of everyone's support on Patreon. As you know, becoming a Reptiliatus channel patron comes with a whole ton of interesting perks, such as discounts on merch, sneak peeks into upcoming projects and videos, and a whole bunch of other things like exclusive content. If you're interested in learning about how you can become a channel patron for as little as $2 a month, you can check out the link down below in the video description. And as always, I wanna take a moment to sincerely thank the newest channel patrons who have joined since the last video. Today, we're thanking Paula, Cameron, and Steph. Thank you so much for becoming Reptiliatus channel patrons. Looking forward to chatting with you guys and getting to know you better on the platform. Well, everybody, there you have it. I sincerely hope you enjoyed today's Green Tree Monitor update video. As you can see, Sabzi and Basil are doing fantastic. Thank you again so much for watching. Comment down below if you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts. And don't forget to answer today's question of the day. If you're interested in seeing more content pertaining to Green Tree Monitors, check out the playlist up above for more videos on them. Otherwise, I can't wait to see you all in our next video. Take care and see you all soon. Bye.